Every single player who has made a skill capped guide or played under the skill cap team has started with a single achievement, Gladiator. No matter how long you've played the game, this single title is a stepping stone for a never ending PvP journey. All the time you spent learning the game suddenly feel worth it, and it unlocks new adventures that you previously could only dream of, and the desire to climb higher and higher. When we started the Road to Glad series a few weeks ago, we honestly didn't know what to expect. And we definitely didn't expect the two-week announcement, the week our priest was leaving for vacation. <sighs> Looks like our team will have to scramble once Rocky gets back from his ski trip. Rocky would get back on the 13th of February, which would give our team over a week to grind their remaining wins. As long as they could stay above 2400 and dodge a few death bolts, this should be easy, right? Seven Dark jump Souls. down. Dark Souls death bolt, Dad. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm always <laughs> great at fading it and it always hits me through. Today, we will see just how much progress our team has made since week one. This episode, our team will have one final coaching session and see if they can manage to get Gladiator with only 10 days left of season two. Welcome to the finale of the Skill Capped Road to Gladiator Challenge. Let's rewind back to the start of this series, where our goal was to take three random players who had never played together and pair them up with coaches for weekly VOD reviews and see if they could get Gladiator for the first time. We designed this challenge to teach our team and you, the audience, the five pillars of WoW PvP, and over the past five weeks, we've all learned something about offense, defense, positioning, and communication. Our team started their journey around 1900 rating in 3v3 and week after week, their ratings started to climb, all the way until the end of week four, where they finished their Q session in the mid 2500s and only a handful of wins away from reaching Gladiator. In just four weeks, a team of players who had never played together had climbed over 600 rating in 3v3. By mastering each pillar, they were slowly building the foundation to truly understand how to play WoW Arena, which would eventually build toward a deeper understanding of the game and the ability to develop strategies to overcome any situation. This game knowledge could be carried over to other comps and even other classes. There's a reason why the best players in the world can play so many specs at a high level, because the knowledge required to play one class or one comp can easily be carried over to other specs in the game. By making small adjustments to their gameplay every week after each VOD review, our team had developed a better understanding of WoW Arena. And now, they were only a few wins away from the achievement they had been chasing for years. You know what? We don't have to waste any more time. Let's just show you their final games. Go, 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 go. There we go, boys. We're glad you're Oh, God. Five weeks ago, our team was struggling to win games at rival ratings, but now they were able to consistently win above 2500 MMR. 
Their offense went from janky, uncoordinated setups to perfectly synchronized goes, allowing them to play off the true strength of their comp, which is its control. On defense, our team started out completely blind, not having a single idea about proper cooldown trading. But now, they were starting to make more efficient one-to-one -one trades, allowing them to outpace the melee cleave gatekeepers that previously stood in their way. Both offense and defense were elevated by positioning and communication, which are the first two advanced concepts needed to really gain mastery over Arena. All of these pillars would unlock a more technical understanding of game strategies, which is what allows pro players to dominate across multiple classes and even multiple expansions. Once you gain this understanding, it never really goes away, and it allows you to navigate new matchups for the first time. When I fight new comps in WoW, um, I usually try and think about the comp in like what sim similarities it has to other comps that I face more regularly. And if it's a comp I've never faced before, I just try to think of the individual classes and not so much of the actual comp and just try and think of what could be a good target to that comp, what could be a lose condition, a win condition, all these kind of things. Because in the current game, and I mean it's been the same for many years, not every comp can kill every single class in the game. Like a good example would be not many comps can kill mages in the game because mages are really tanky. If you're playing like a spell cleave, you're not really gonna be able to kill hunters. And so these are just like random examples and whenever you face a new comp which has any class in the game or any spec, you always have to think about it that about that a bit and try and figure out a card like a target that you can actually kill and also figure out a way you can actually lose the game. What I mean by that is that when you fight a comp there's obviously different kind of archetypes of comps. One would be a setup comp like Rogue Mage or like a dot comp like anything with affliction locks or maybe like a dampening comp that just kills you in dampening, melee cleaves. Um, and all these kind of comms obviously have different win and lose conditions and then you just try and like compare a new comm to something you've already, you already know. Um, that's how you usually figure out win and lose strategies. Over the past five weeks, our coaches had been showing our team the correct strategies for beating all of the popular metacoms. But since the challenge was now over, we wanted to make sure they were able to learn strategies on their own. With this in mind, our players sat down with Marrow one more time, so they could have the knowledge and confidence to get Gladiator every season. The first step to truly mastering strategies is to be able to recognize win conditions that weren't originally on the script. Of course, every comp needs to select a kill target and have some sort of plan on how to take their HP to zero. And while each comp arrives to its win condition in some unique way, the general concept is largely the same. Attack whoever is the most vulnerable. Your offensive attacks might force multiple cooldowns from your original kill target, but you need to be able to recognize when other players become more vulnerable to your attacks and when you should swap. One area our team could improve on is paying closer attention to enemy trinkets and defensive cooldowns to know who is most vulnerable. Like the game is too long already, like a hunter is like, I don't know, hunter will not die, he has turtle, he has trinket, he has accelerate, he has every button, like the hunter will not die, you guys, at this point you guys should just look at trinkets a bit more and see like who has no trinket. I mean, now you guys probably just die, but like the first one and a half minutes or something of the game, you guys actually played really, really sick. You guys didn't do much bad, like the much bad stuff. Then the one go on, uh, where you guys just go hunter and just get his rust, I think it's a bit troll where you don't swap around. And now this last go is also a bit troll because, yeah, I mean, either or even go feral, but you guys just have to hit someone else. You can't hit the one guy that still has trinket. He, he can just save himself too easy and. Yeah, jungle is like you kind of play against a timer. You kind of just have to like improvise and see who doesn't have trinket and then play off that, because the game will end eventually. Like after two three minutes, you either just gonna die to ghost or you're gonna be oom or something. It's always gonna be something that you're just gonna lose to. So. Part of seeing new win conditions also involves assuming your opponents will be actively trying to block your attack, and then knowing who to swap to in order to get full value out of your cooldowns. It's like a general wow thing for like wow arena. It's not just for MP, but any comp, you know, you always try to play around trinkets a lot. Like if you have two people who are like just as good targets and one guy doesn't have trinket, the other guy's trinket, you obviously want to go on the guy with no trinket. Um, and I think building on that a little bit, you should always assume that the enemy team is going to press like CDs. I think too. I think that's a good assumption that if you do your go, like for instance into hunters, if they have sack up, if you do your go into someone, they'll probably, you know, sack that whoever you go on like really quick. Um, like I think that's just an assumption you should make. You should always be ready to swap is what I'm trying to trying to get at. Um, you should assume that you might need to swap and you'll need to yeah. do it like really quick. Like uh, 
it's the same concept with the opener. Like you basically select two targets. You assume one of them is going to press instantly and you go to the next person. And I think doing that mid game is like really smart. This might seem like an obvious concept at first, but you should always plan for the enemy team to actually use their defensives. So when they do, you will immediately know what you should be doing next to keep up momentum. One way they could play around enemy CDs is by pre-CCing the kill target before goes, which is an advanced offensive tactic in Arena. By using micro CCs on kill targets before you stun, you prevent them from reacting to your 3-2-1 setup. With so many classes having high utility in Shadowlands, you need to make sure everyone is CC'd at the same time, which also means making sure the kill target can't pre-use a CD before your 3-2-1 setup, because leaving any sort of gap can allow the enemy team to respond and can shut down your kill. I think the, the, the sort of advanced RMP thing to do right now is to really focus on pre-ing targets, especially I think in the mirror, is it, is it important to kind of pre the rogue as often as possible, is that correct, Morrow? Not like, make him pre vanish or something. I mean, it depends what he has. Yeah. If he doesn't have vanish and he's playing horde, then it's relevant. But if he does, then yeah, you can't let him. Like, then you try and uh, chastise him and something into the go. You don't want to basically what you want to try and avoid is uh, him vanishing a go without having to drink it for it, right? You want him to like drink a vanish or go. Then he doesn't have vanish anymore and he doesn't drink it anymore. Preemptive gameplay also works on defense, and every pro player will tell you that pre-using defensives is a meta-defining part of Shadowlands Arena. If you can use CDs right before the enemy team does their setup, you can delay their go and prevent your healer from having to commit their trinket. Like when he gets stunned, he should you should vanish here or melt. Like this is already like a small misplay, you know, that you don't react to this. Hmm. Because they yeah. can't, like, it can't happen that they go like this. I also don't know how you get stunned, Rocky, to be honest. That's really awkward because yeah. you have Holy Ward. You just, you know, he gets the Holy Ward, then you just fade. Like, you yeah, cannot even get stunned if we, here. If we start, like, Mark and Arrow are in stealth, and then I, I don't want to Holy Ward myself because then he can just tap me. Yeah, yeah but he, they're found already. Like, if you go yeah. back another five seconds, they're found. The second they're found, then combat, you need to Holy Ward yourself. Okay, uh, yeah. So this opener is like literally completely scuffed because of like small misplays, but it's still misplays, you know? Yeah. And then you get stunned. I mean, even at this point, it's still fine. You can just vanish. The goes over. They can't do anything. If you go on your mage, he will just straight trinket if it's combust, and you're going to be fine. And then you're not really going to be that far behind. But now um, they just get a free go, which they probably shouldn't. <clears throat> oh, and just a reminder, you can view the full-length coaching sessions from every episode in the series right now at skillcap.com slash wow. With Shadowlands Season 2 officially over, we wanted to know from our players what they had learned along the way, and what, if anything, they could share with the community. My biggest challenge as a player was probably getting the confidence in knowing that you are doing the right thing. I think I like to have a script before I go into an arena and follow it, but then sometimes you don't have that. And just knowing that the next move I make will be correct, getting that confidence, I think, was the biggest problem. After reaching Gladiator now, I just want to keep pushing and improving. I want to push Gladiator in more seasons to come and also keep pushing beyond that. And also that the even the best players make mistakes, I think. Because once you realize that, it feels so much more reachable to push even further. One of the hardest things for me personally was learning about communication. Because if you've come from LFG, you don't really use any communication. One of the biggest challenges for a new player is having enough game knowledge to keep up with the pace of the game. Because in Shadowlands, you need to know a lot of things and it's hard if you're just starting out. But the most important thing that I learned is, is that it's a team game. You can't just solo it. My best advice to players trying to get Gladiator would be just to find a good group of people, a good team, and stick to them. When we started, I thought we could potentially do it, but I was really not sure about my own skill, if it's good enough or if, if it's out of reach for me forever. So I was kind of curious if I could even do it if I get help. I think the biggest obstacles uh, for players trying to get Gladiator are all about knowledge and then about improving your own gameplay. You do not have to tilt or you get upset or 
be toxic to your teammates if something bad happens because there's always something you could have done better yourself and then just shake it off and cue the next game and then you will get there eventually. We had interviewed Rocky after week one when he originally described his goals for this challenge. For him, the rating wasn't that important. What mattered more was seeing improvement, which is something that the best players can recognize. You don't have to get Gladiator rank one or win BlizzCon to be a great player. You just need one thing, a commitment every day to be better than you were the day before. I think we can get above 2.2 and even maybe hold 2.2. But in the end, I don't think it's about the rating, because if we get better, the rating will come anyways. Whoa! <laughs> I was just cutting onions over here, I don't, I don't know what's going on! <clears throat> Alright guys, that wraps up Season 1 of the Road to Glad series. Hey, we want to know from you! Let us know in the comments below what you thought of the series, and let us know what you think we should do next time! And while you're at it, consider checking out skillcap.com slash wow if you want to see the full coaching sessions from every episode. We have several hours of VOD reviews from every week in the series, on top of hundreds of guides and arena commentaries that have been proven time after time to level up your gameplay in arena. You can join for prices as low as $4.99 a month, and we even offer a money back guarantee if you don't see rating gains while actively using our website. Over the years, we have seen players just like Arrow, Mark, and Rocky achieve their goals in Arena, and you could be next. So if you want to take your gameplay to the next level, check out skillcap.com slash wow today. And as always, we want to thank you for sticking around, and we hope to see you soon.